Hello, my name is David Wynn, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Server Switching and Virtualization Product Group. This video is part of a series that is intended to show some unique advantages made possible by Cisco Server offering called the Unified Computing System, or UCS for short. This, this video will show the viewer the value details of creating IO sub-assemblies in UCS for server deployment. One of the biggest advantages with UCS is service profiles. It's made up of templates and policies and pools. The service profiles really helps to streamline the operation, ease the deployment of servers, and reduce human errors. So when you create a service profile, you need to define the number of I.O. ports, whether it's storage or Ethernet. When it comes to these I.O. ports, there are some very basic characteristics for each of these. One is address, whether it's WWPN, WWNN, or MAC addresses. Another thing is which port is connected to your network, VLAN-wise. And there might be some policies that you have in place for it, whether it's QoS, connectivity policies. So these are the basic characteristics when you define an I.O. port. Well, when you start building out large servers or large quantities, you find that a lot of these stuff are very, have common characteristics and coincide with each other. Well, you really can simplify it just by creating I.O. templates. I.O. templates will basically pull an address from a set of pools that you have predefined. So you have a pool of MAC address, you have a pool of worldwide node names, worldwide port names that you can pull from, and you can basically define, predefine the VLANs that this I.O. port can connect to, and as well as policies. So this really helps streamline the, and reduce the need of defining it over and over again. In the last side, we talk about I.O. templates and how it's useful for building out a template if it's if it's, it's going to be used a lot for my multiple servers. Well, we've taken a step further in Cisco UCS 2.1. Cisco UCS 2.1 has just been released, and this new um, policy that we created is what we call I.O. connectivity policies. The difference between this and the last one is that in I.O. connectivity policies, you actually define the number of NIC cards that's going to be in with this connection policy. So, for example, I create a connection policy one, and it's going to basically be for all my EXI web services. And within this connection policy one, I'll have four NIC cards. One NIC, one NIC card will be my external connection, one NIC card will be my internal, one for my control management, and one for vMotion. Right? So this is always common for all my EXI web services. All my EXI web services will have four connections. So now, within the, each NIC card, I can define the VLAN membership and policies, or to simplify even further, I can just point it to a template. I can, you can do the same thing for under your storage or your VHBA. So you can create a connection policy three under your site web services and then VHBA. And in this case, I have two, one for fabric A and one for fabric B, and I just basically point the IO configurations to a template that's pre, been predefined. So now when you want to apply to the templates or the policies, you just go to create a service profile, and under the service profile, you just create the number of NIC cards. Under the IO connectivity, you can either do it individually or just assign it to a template which has all the pools, all the address, the VLANs, and policies are pre configured. To so make it a step further, where you don't need to define how many IO cards you need in each device, you just basically point connection policy and a connection policy will already have all the necessary configurations and how many IO cards that you have. Okay, so let's see how this works and how it can help you here. Okay, so under the land, let's go ahead and create our policies here. And the root and let's create templates for VNIX first. Okay, so we'll have ETH0. Um, let's do one define the Mac pool, and then any other QoS policy or anything that you want to configure. But let's keep it simple. And we'll do another one here. One, we'll put fabric B. Okay. Create another one, we'll do fabric A. Last one, we'll do one for, for, for B. Okay. 
we can need both solar if you want. There. Okay. Now, to create the land connectivity policy, it's still under the same area. And we'll just do a four port connectivity. Now, if you can see here that you have all the information that you can figure in the templates is still sitting here. So you can create one individually here, or you can just reference that template and just consume what you can figure here. Okay, so let's do, since I can create the templates, I can just do this. Template. Then we'll create one more. Okay, now I can create a different template. Let's say I have a, a two port template. And I know which NIC card needs zero. And I can just create, let's say I want three for this one template. At eighth one, again, I would say it's these two I want to use. Okay. Now on the sand side, you go into sand tab, get into policies, root. Let's create these VHBAs. VHBA zero. Uh, WPN here. A1 for fabric P. Uh, okay. Now yeah, it's in connectivity policies, and this just basically tells you how many cards that you already want. So let's just say two port for simplicity. Design it WWN. There we go. One. Again, if you notice, you can give finger up manually or just reference this VHBA. Oops. This is there. And we'll create one more. That. Now, let's create a service profile that uses these, right? So let's do it from expert. Let's call it XA. Four port. My web services. Now under networking, you can see you can just do it out and you can figure it one by one. Um, but you know, or you can just use this and create and just use a template. But again, um, you need to do it for all the ports you want. Or since we already have a connectivity policy, we already know that it's already four port. We'll just say it's a four port. And that's it. Then the storage is the same thing. Either do it individually or just reference this. And that's it. Now let's say I want to create another one, right? I can create a bare metal. Let's see. Bare metal installation. It's a two port. Now I don't have to do it individually one by one. I just keep referencing these and that's it. And then for my sand, um, since there's no sand, I just do that. And I can create a different profile and just reference those. So you can see how it really simplifies the configuration for you now. It really helps. Um, Reduce the amount of error because you don't have is you don't have the less likely of you having errors when you keep redoing the same actions over and over. So you can see how with UCS with service profiles and templates and policy it really helps with the overall configuration. In UCS 2.1, we really took a step further in terms of the LAN connectivity side or the storage side, and really allowed the user to predefine a number of connections and the characteristics for each of those um, I/O ports. So now it helps with operation efficiency. It really eases the deployment, and because it's already been predefined, the error, luckily, of error has been 
drastically than we do. This ends this UCS Advantage video, where we show you how unique capabilities in the Cisco UCS can lead to simplified deploy models with much faster service turnaround to meet the increasing demands of the business. Please go to www.cisco.com slash go slash UCS for a printed collateral, including a brochure that highlights the information that's shown in this video. And thank you very much.